welcome one and all to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert, and happy, happy. You feel that, John? Yeah, I feel it. That, what would you call that? That's a Friday audience. That is a Friday audience. <laughs> there's a certain je ne sais quoi. Yeah, there's a je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais quoi. <laughs> Holidays are right around the corner, which means down in uh, Washington, D.C., it's time for both parties to put aside their differences, reach across the aisle for a common cause, murdering a pine tree. <laughs> Capital Christmas tree went up this week, and it isn't any ordinary conifer. No, it is eight stories high, and the U.S. Forest Service has named it Sugar Bear. Oh my of course, it's traditional for holiday trees to be named after 1970s pimps. Last year, my family opened presents under a blue spruce named Big King Rooster. <laughs> Let's check out this bad boy. Whoo! That is beautiful. There it stands at the Capitol, the same hollow ground where America's racist uncles gathered to shimmy down the chimney and <laughs> pinch out a sugar plum on Nancy Pelosi's desk. <laughs> but as we all know, the most important moment of any Christmas tree lighting ceremony is the awkward lead up to flipping the switch. Now we're Counting from five. Five, four, three, two, one. Yay! Oh, that's fun. <laughs> it was kind of hard to tell if that was a countdown about the tree or Biden's poll numbers. <laughs> but that's that. Oh, I know. Sometimes jokes are sad. <laughs> but you have to face. You have to face it. Then it gets funny. But that's not the only festive fire hazard in D.C. Yesterday, the White House held the National Christmas Tree Lighting, which featured special guests Chris Stapleton, Kristen Chenoweth, and Billy Porter. Though it was a little awkward when Billy Porter showed up wearing the exact same outfit as the tree. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? Billy wore it better. <laughs> now, this, this year... <laughs> Billy Porter fans. Yeah. Billy Porter fans. This, this year... This year is actually the 99th National Christmas Tree Lighting. Here's a photo of the first one way back in 1923. And, oh, hey, look, there's Joe Biden. <laughs> he looks good. He looks good. <laughs> he looks fantastic. He was there. He was there. He was there. <laughs> of course, tonight is also the sixth night of Hanukkah. And this week at the White House, President Biden and Vice President Harris hosted a family Hanukkah celebration. And it was particularly special because it included the first Jewish spouse of a vice president, second gentleman, and dad about to hand the waiter his clean plate and playfully say, we hated it, <laughs> Doug Emhoff. Emhoff. Sure, give it up for Emhoff. Oh. Big, Doug. big Doug heads here. They dig Doug. Emhoff celebrated by lighting the menorah with Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. Schumer almost didn't make it to the ceremony because he first had to get permission from Joe Manchin. Ooh. Speaking of, yeah, again, sometimes jokes are sad. <laughs> Speaking of things that last longer than you expected, the pandemic. <laughs> this last week, we learned there's a new version of the coronavirus, which is bad, but there's also a new version of Taylor Swift's All Too Well, which is good and almost as catchy. But now, something has happened that has shaken me to my core. And after 20 months of pandemic, I barely have a core left. <laughs> we just learned that a big retailer, Dollar Tree, is bumping up their prices to $1.25 for most items. Hey, dollar is right in the name of the store. I haven't been this upset since I found out that Panda Express does not serve real panda. <laughs> I, think, I think it's Tofanda. This is not a rash decision, though. Dollar Tree tested the new prices and found that 91% of customers said they would continue to shop there despite the price change. Sure, but is that 91% out of 100 or out of 125? Because apparently numbers don't mean anything anymore to you animals. Yeah, what they doing, man? There have to be rules. I can't even get a bag it's of salt peanuts. Math. Listen to how upset I am. <laughs> this is my upset voice. <laughs> Of course, Dollar Tree isn't the only retailer feeling the pinch this year. I'll tell you the latest on the ongoing supply chain crisis in tonight's Cargo Unchained Booze Edition. Bartender, I'll have another. How about anything? 
the latest supply chain snafu is hitting the beverage industry, where there is a growing alcohol shortage, including high-end rums, cognacs, and tequila. Wait, is no tequila? Well, time to update the song. Hit it. Water. It's quality. It's a long, a long, yeah, that's a long walk. It's a long walk to the well. But it was worth it. But there was water in there. There was water in there. Long walk, yeah, long yeah, walk. Water. But wait, there's less. <laughs> there's also shortages of wine, which explains. I feel the same way. Which explains your suburban mom's new T-shirt. Don't talk to mommy until someone has resolved the kinks in the global supply chain. <laughs> <laughs> it's been nearly 11 months, 11 months mm. since the Capitol insurrection, and the justice keeps hitting the fan. And I'll tell you the latest in tonight's seditionist roundup roundup. It would behoove these asses to pony up for a lawyer. Tonight in the Ring of Wrong, we've got Oath Keeper and actor James Beeks, seen here showing his range from banker cowboy to cowboy banker. Beeks was arrested last week for allegedly attempting to break through a line of police officers guarding the Senate chamber. But it turns out, he's not just a threat, he's a triple threat. Because until his arrest, he was playing Judas in the touring production of Andrew Lloyd Webber's musical Jesus Christ Superstar. A Broadway performer was at the insurrection? Well, that explains why he was giving notes to the other rioters. No, 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 when you scream, hang Mike Pence, you do it from the diaphragm. Ah. Not, hang Mike Pence, it's hang Mike Pence. <laughs> <laughs> but investigators finally found Beeks after attending two performances of Jesus Christ Superstar. <laughs> really? Two performances? Come on, FBI. Just admit you like a good musical. Uh, I think we need to go back tomorrow night to buy a T-shirt. I mean, ID the perp. Do you think he would sign my playbill? I mean, subpoena. <laughs> this week, Beeks was in court, and he got himself in hot water when he told the judge that he had divine authority and argued the government had no jurisdiction over him. Divine authority? Does he think he is his character from Jesus Christ Superstar? <laughs> God, I wish he'd been in Cats. Your Honor, this is not a jellical court. So it has no authority over Jellicle Cats. I rest my case. Meow! I said meow, sir! <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But the judge must have been a fan, because Beeks was released under strict conditions including that he observe a curfew and wear a GPS tracking device. So get ready to see James Beek star in Joseph and the amazing Technicolor ankle monitor. <laughs> but even though... <laughs> oh, I forgot. I you forgot about that. Ankle lock. Now I'm gonna bring it home. Even though he's not gonna be a touring Broadway artist anymore, Beeks has another career to fall back on because his YouTube page also lists him as one of the top Michael Jackson tribute artists in the U.S. It makes sense, because this guy is bad. <laughs> and he clearly want to be starting something. But he's no smooth criminal, because we all remember the time Biden won the election, but Beeks tried to beat it and left Capitol maintenance having to clean poop off the wall. <laughs> Beeks can say, say, say whatever he wants and scream about sovereign citizenship, but he'll go down in history as somebody seriously dangerous, PYT. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. I give Jeff Goldblum the Colbert questionnaire, but when we come back, it's Meanwhile.